Hello and welcome to the MBS Reviews. I am your host, Norman Senzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hello, all you fine brothers and Pegasus sisters. I am your nightmare. Oh my. Are you going to bite me? Bite you? What? How many nightmares bite you? You'll be surprised. Tell me more. I sense more about your subconscious at play here. <laughs> Probably later, Silver. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Can I make a Spongebob reference since we're reviewing this episode? <laughs> Go ahead. I want to hear what you have to say. I can't sing at the moment because I'm terrible, so let me grab the reference. I, I could do even worse. Oh, God. No. I know this one. <laughs> I love this one. There it is. Edit that in, Norman. <laughs> Oh, this Oh, God, one. the campfire song song. <laughs> oh, yes. C-A-M-P-I fire S-O-N-G song. C-A-M-P-I-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. Uh, I just love this one. This song is great. <laughs> and if you love it, then you'll just sing along. I forgot. It's been forever since Oh, uh, boys. Old Spongebob was fun. <laughs> like, Old Spongebob was fun. But we ain't talking about Spongebob. It ain't that kind of review show. In today's Can't episode- we talk about Spongebob anyway? No. If someone sponsored us, probably. <laughs> but talking about sponsor, this episode is sponsored by Starstream. He's been waiting a while for this one and we're going to deliver it for him. And in this episode, Apple Jack Rarity and Rainbow Dash tells Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo about their favorite legend after their camping trip is ruined by flyers. Like I mentioned before, this episode is a quote-unquote legends episode. And by legends is, um, legends of magic, uh, something related to the old ponies of yonder. What? No Zelda? Nah, no Zelda. She was too busy getting kidnapped <laughs> again. Uh, no, that's Peach. <clears throat> hey, Zelda gets her fair share. I don't. Know. I'm on a never-ending quest to save my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, excuse me, princess. Well, actually my girlfriend, but the point still stands. Uh, but anywho, Silver, first impressions. Well, as someone who's been reading the Legends of Magic and enjoying it, I was glad to see the origins because uh, Legends of Magic had been coming out several months in advance of this episode. It was like, oh, hey, that sounds really cool. I'd like to see that story. Oh, here's that story. Uh, we also got to enjoy something we haven't seen in a while, the sisterly dynamic between the CMC and their respective uh, sisters, mentors, what have you. Have at you. Mm-hmm. Have at you. <laughs> now, yeah. I, I can give a ranking on which which episodes I enjoy the most, but uh, that comes later. By and large, I just enjoyed this all around. It was fun. It's a good look back, and I enjoy sort of these mini vignettes of uh, equestrian history. Yeah. And Seppi, what about you? Well... I didn't really think much of this episode at first because I, you know, I didn't make the connections right away when I first watched the episode. I did enjoy them, but my first instinctive drawn towards was Rarity's story. Mm -hmm. I like that story the most. And as for me, this episode was fun. Like like Silver mentioned before, the Legends of Magic uh, comic series came out way before this one came out. And the stories for those one were always what happened after they became quote unquote famous. Horse famous, if you will. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh god. And the story here tells that, hey, um, here's what we did to become legends. And the comics are mostly like this is what we did after we became legends and so on. Which is a nice touch to the whole crossover thingy that they've been doing for a while now. I remember mentioning way back when that the comics and the series are trying to kind of cross over for a bit, try to tell a more in-depth story for what's going on. This one here is quite blatant with how they're doing it, which I really like. But my opinions aside, if you guys have not watched this episode, pause here for a bit and go watch it. And welcome back. So we start off with our heroes setting up camp in the forest. The forest of, I got no idea where this is. And I don't think this is the camping location that they wanted to be at in the first place. But I guess nightfall's coming, so they have to set up camp for reasons. Yes. I'll blame Rarity. She likes to travel 
not so light. Oh, she at least have three briefcase that rather than a whole truckload. Well, that you know, sounds at least. Or you mean a cartload? They don't trucks don't exist in Equestria, Norman. Tell that to the marketing department. That's right. Applejack's pink truck will live in infamy. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I, never... I am legitimately concerned. What? Oh, have you never seen the Applejack's truck toy? No, mm-hmm. I have not. I don't look into the toys. Oh, oh I must break you. <laughs> Why are you people looking at the MLP toys is beyond Seppi, me. Seppi, this is way back in the olden days of G4 where Hasbro Toy Marketing got no idea what they wanted to do. Remember that balloon that Twilight always rides into Ponyville? That was a toy marketing ploy that they wanted in. What? Yep. And also the train that brings all the ponies from I don't know where to Ponyville. Toy marketing also. I've just shown uh, Safi a photo of the truck. I can only assume. I believe I have broken her. (laughs) <laughs> My day is complete. <laughs> yep, that was a toy back yep. in the days. Still is. Mm-hmm. I think this is a rare item, by the way. Oh, talking about rare items and toys that don't make sense. Remember Tempest glider jet thingy? No, don't don't say no more. I don't need anything else to break me. You know, I've not yet I've not yet seen that in stores. No, in the movie. <laughs> Another movie. I'd like to see a jet fighter stay on target. <laughs> stay on target. Uh, a few minutes yeah. in, we're already derailing. Anyway, getting back on track. Oh come on, it's fun to derail. I know, but we need we need to do this. Well, actually, I'd, uh, it's kind of frustrating because due to the spoilers that came out, thanks to the hack on Hasbro, mm-hmm. Rarity's commentary on her packing uh, mm. takes on a different meaning now. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I wanted to... I thought about it, but no, nah, I, I don't have to talk about it because let's just say whatever that thing that came out, things could be changed all in a sudden. Like, suddenly they could have been changed on a dime. So let's not say anything about that one. It'll make us look like idiots if we're wrong. Well, I don't know about idiots. I do that on my own on a regular basis. But let's just rely on rarities. No spoilers! Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. But for this one, uh, we see Rarity packing only three briefcase, Applejack being quote-unquote impressed, and mentioning that, oh, so only three briefcases, but you brought a lot of... Um, lanterns. Hmm. Foreshadowing, probably? Well, technically, lanterns are light sources. So, yes, they would be, they would be, uh, shadowing stuff. <laughs> yes. And we get to see Rainbow Dash picking poisonous berries. And Scootaloo saying, yo, that's poisonous. Drop it. And still being afraid of the forest. Poor her. Well, in fairness, the last time she was at the forest, she fell off a waterfall. Yeah, true. That leaves an impression. Yeah, true, 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 true. Ah, but yeah. still, forget about the dank forest. We're going to have a picnic in the forest. And picnics are fun, right? Like, they have a lot of great food and whatnot. And, yeah, they have, like, um carrot hot dogs or something like that. Yep, taken from New York and Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Though, though, you know what also has lots of food? What? Not eating outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it, man. The last time I did it, I got invaded by ants. Ay, not fun. Not fun. And talking about not funs, it seems that our hero here are being invaded by flyers. What are flyers, you might ask? Well, flyers are a hybrid of spider and flies. Which, funny enough, ties into a little bit to... Uh... Most mythological creatures are usually a combo of, like, the most deadly aspects. You're scared of panthers? Hey, picture a winged panther. Isn't it just a chimera? Well, chimeras is something different, but there is, I believe there is a winged panther uh, creature in mythology. I'm trying to Google. A winged panther. Yes. Oh, my God. Where do you get these crazy ideas from? The internet. Although, in one case, there's the Monster in My Pocket wiki, which is 
uniquely um, Freudian. Monster in my pocket. Tee hee, tee hee. He did call Pokemans. Nothing makes sense anymore, and I don't know how to interpret this. But anywho. Um... Well, start with Applejack's truck, and we'll work from there. <laughs> Three. But anywho, uh, Sid Sliders comes along and webs Sweetie Belle in the face. How rude. And it seems that Sid Sliders invited their posse around and starts being annoying to them, biting them. Annoying? Home. Not, they're trying to eat them oh, alive. Yeah. Ain't that annoying? <laughs> So, anywho, after the onslaught of attacks from the flighters, they went into the nearby scary caves. With Applejack hogtied by flighters. Like, this ain't happened since Trixie. Why does this keep happening to me? Applejack, I'm worried about your fetishes. Oh my. But, oh my, indeed. But, anywho, uh, in said caves, the girls start telling campfire stories. And... Uh, said kind of fire stories are fun. We start off with Applejack's favorite story, The Legend of Rock Hoof. Speaking of ranking, I'll just say this in advance. This was probably my least favorite of the stories. Really, no? Which is surprising because Rock Hoof's comic is my favorite. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, Silver, why don't you take this part? Like, why don't you break it down? Like, why don't you break down the stories of the legends? Alright, well, Rock Hoof the Tiny Earth Pony. Had a very tiny frame. And if you ever saw him, you would even say that's lame. (laughs) All of the mighty Helmers (laughs) used to laugh and mock his name. They never let poor Rock Hoof join their military organization that is meant to defend the town, but they bail on the first sign of a volcano. So, yes, I think that uh, summarizes it quite nicely. You've been sitting on that one, haven't you? <laughs> Actually, no, I improv that on the spot. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> good oh one. Oh, my God. Oh, good one. Uh, but it's so true. But it's so true. So, um, to re- re- reiterate, Rock Hoof is a really small pony who wants to join the uh, Mighty Helms, but because he's so scrawny and tiny, uh, the other helmsman, kind of told him, nah, man, like, you're not strong enough. You might hurt yourself. Here, here's a shovel. Go dig a hole. Ha <laughs> ha. By the way, Rock Hoof here is a farmer to begin with. But he wants to join the combat, so... But he knows how to shovel, and when a v- volcano goes off, you get probably the greatest scream of terror in the entire show. <laughs> yes. <anyway>. Rarity <laughs> wishes she could get this level of drama. But, okay, I just have to say, the moment when Rock Hoof screams, and the face and the timing where it... Um, crossover to Apple Bloom here is just amazing. Like, look at that face and just think about it for a bit. <laughs> also, Rock of, like, after he grew up, I like that. <laughs> he looked good. <clears throat> but people might say, huh, a shovel? How could he do that? Apparently, they have not seen Shovel Knight. Exactly. I was about to say, he's, he's a Knight of the Mighty Helm and he has a shovel. He's a Shovel Knight. <laughs> Therefore, he is awesome. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, go by Shovel Knight. It's a fun game. But here's why this is probably my least favorite. Mm. Rockoff is trying to dig a trench and to save his town from a volcano's magma. I, I just want liquid magma <laughs> in my base. But then all of a sudden, Deus Ex Baloney, uh, he is empowered and becomes a hunk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you just sort of like, what? Why? How? Where? When? This is one of those things where maybe he struck on magic because you see him hit something and it transforms him. But here's the thing, Silver. Like, you mentioned in your song where the mighty helms uh, skipped town after the townsfolk didn't want to leave. Like, I got no idea what to say about that. Well, they're just like, well, you know, technically we're supposed to defend the town, but we want to live, so see ya. Yeah, but the Toss folks didn't want to move, so like, uh, who's to blame here, really? I mean, uh... Well, honestly, I will blame the town 
a village can be rebuilt. You can't get your life back. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You people deserve a Darwin Award, yep. even though Rock of Deus x you into survival. Yep, yep. Proving yep. that natural selection is a lie. <laughs> yeah. But at least Rockhoof here bulk up and save the town. And yay, everybody is happy and Rockhoof is part of the Mighty Helms now. So that is awesome. Yeah! But what makes him my favorite in the comics is that you get to see what happens after his success. Oh, yeah. And how, and how <laughs> well, again, Vic- Victory has defeated you. <laughs> uh but this one, this one, it's just sort of he wants it, and then all of a sudden, it's arbitrarily given to him by the land, by destiny, by his shovel. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I have to say this too, because this is a retelling of the event, so we don't really know what happened. So something else might have come into play, but Apple Jacks is just remembering the story by memory and also paraphrasing a lot here and so on. Who knows? And tr- and trying to get over Apple Apple Bloom's fangirling. Yeah, yeah. Good. There's an episode for you. Apple Bloom now gets to meet Rockhoof and develops her first crush. Oh, no. But how could you not look at those luscious mane, those beard? Ooh. Now we've learned something new about Norman. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> what well, anywho? Um, man crush, man crush, totally hetero man crush. <laughs> but anywho, uh, getting back to the present, uh, everybody. You, uh, sorry, you got me a present. Yay! <laughs> yes, yes. But anywho, everybody is enjoying the story, and it seems that. The fighters are still at bay, planning their next form of attack. And 3D Bell says the cave is dark, damp, and dank. Like old dank memes, yo. And Rarity says, hey, it ain't all that bad. Look, there's gold here and I can make shadow puppets of Twilight. Ain't that impressive? I call shenanigans because there's no way Twilight's that good a dancer. (laughs) I remember Sweet and Elite Uh... and Equestria Girls. (laughs) Uh, there's a reason why she didn't dance in the movie. <laughs> but anywho, uh, now it's time for Rarity's story. And Rarity's story is awesome one too. My favorite. Why don't you s- summarize this one? All right, well, I don't have a song this time, so I'll just rely on Ebonics. <laughs> so down in the, down the hood, yo, there'd be the, this uh, mare who's real flash, and he miss me, and he'd be like, damn, girl. And she'd be all like, oh, I'm off. Peace out, y'all. And the empress would be like, yo, yo, dog, why are you harshing my buzz? That's whack, yo. Kind of surprised Safi isn't, like, cringing right now. Uh, let's see. She's she's muted herself yeah. because she, yes, I think she's rolling in her blanket or something. Yes. <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, this whack empress, she'd be cracking down on the whole place being, yo, you can't slip up to this. But Miss Bane be... Be back in town. She'd be like, uh uh-uh, uh, sister. I take you down. So she did, but then it's like, I'm old, yo. It's like, damn. You got ugly. You were ugly. <sighs> you ugly. And they'd be like, dragon on dragon action. Oof, Freudian. Wait. Dragon on dragon action. Yeah. Silver, you should know better. Ravioli, I... ravioli, don't F the dragon lolly. <laughs> what the what? Is that is that Ember's new theme song? Dragon, dragon, yes. like the dragon, dragon, dragon. <laughs> Rock the dragon, dragon ball, Miss Bane. Yeah. So, so what happened next? Don't over the dragon lolly. But, but anyway, Miss Bane, be like a, a dang girl. If all about looks, then here you take mine, yo. And she turn and the the fly honey becomes like this fly older lady, but she's still fine. Mm-hmm. She's still good. And then um, must be like. Hey, I'd be good now, so I'll be all nice up in this crib, yo, is he? Okay. Go. Go go sit in the corner. <laughs> no. no. <sighs> Alrighty then. So to summarize what Silver just said. Um, <laughs> Can you even make sense? Of what I, 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 just I said? know what happened, but I just gotta make it sure, make sure the people at home do. So anywho 
uh, no. Miss Main here is beloved by all because of her kindness and looks. And she got enrolled to a special magic school. And, well, she's kind of successful there. Gotten a letter from her old town saying that one of her BFF is now the Empress. And she's thought like, yo, I better go back home and check out on my old homies. See how things are going on. You're ruining my favorite story. <laughs> back into his hay, yo. Yeah, yeah. And... You're not helping. <laughs> And once in the hood, uh, Miss Main says, like, yo, what going down here, man? Like, why is everything so whacked? And... I hate you, Bala. <laughs> and one of the ponies. Don't, don't be hating, Bala. Mm-hmm. I leave for, like, two seconds, and then suddenly you guys are rapping about my favorite story, and I hate you both because of it. <laughs> but anywho, uh, one random pony says that, Yo, the Empress is whack, yo. We ain't got no time to clean the town or whatever. Like, she... Has us 24 hours at her place making it look fly. And we're here, got dip. And uh, Miss Main sees that a pony, a young pony here is stealing a flower. And yeah, things just whack, out of whack. So Miss Main steps up to Sable Spirit and they have a Dragon Ball fight. Nothing like T-Rex versus Twilight, but still, it's pretty impressive for this short. And after defeating Stable Spirit, Miss Main here sacrificed her youth to make everything beautiful, including restoring her friend's age. And with that, she became a legend. And wherever she goes, she fixes stuff. And one thing I have to mention, uh, Miss Main here is from Napon. <laughs> Napon, <laughs> I know. Isn't that like another way of like a horse pun on the Japanese way of saying Japan? Yes, indeed. Huh. I never noticed that because I didn't know the name of the place. Uh, when I mention it, I've been reading fan fictions about it. So that's about it. Nothing too specific or nothing too legit. But like if you take a look see at the ponies here, their horns are all curved. So that means they're from another part of Equestria? I don't know. I believe the the Japanese Kirin, which is their version of the unicorn, also has a curved horn. So it's a nice touch to add a bit more variety to Equestria. Mm, true that, true that. I, I wonder now, because of all this, do weebs exist in Equestria now? Yeah, look at Fluttershy. I'm shocked you'd ask. Weebs are omnipresent. I'm sure that there's a, an Attack on Dragon anime, and I'm sure that there's a, a Yu-Gi-Oh pony around there somewhere. Oh yeah, same. So I like to call no. it, I like to call them Honda Kun, <laughs> and also Kill a Kill ponies. They're there. Yeah, we've seen them in comics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really, but, I yeah. haven't seen any. But they're living amongst nudists anyway, so I guess it all fits. Miss <laughs> Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. There needs to be that oh, anime. Check. Gotta wait. In- uh, no. but like I was saying, what I was saying, yeah, uh, I was asking you, Silver, ain't Kirin's part dragon, part horse? I believe so, but it's the closest parallel we have to a unicorn. Ah, all right, then, all right, then. So... Then again, Spike would count as Miss Twilight Sparkle's dragon maid. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, um, getting back on track, the flighters are attacking the cave now, and... Rainbow Dash, with her bright idea, attacks the cave roof and done in a cave-in, inciting a panic in Scootaloo, hyperventilating and causing her to panic. But, ha, <laughs> come on, he ain't that bad, because Applejack is reuniting the flame, and now it's time for Rainbow Dash's story. Although, you know, we kind of skipped over one thing, mm-hmm. where what is it? Uh, when Rainbow got the campfire oh. into the cave... And had good gravy. She took one for the team with all those spider bites. Okay, flyder bites. Also, she has super regenerative powers. Even even I'm a little jealous. All of them, Silver. All of them. All the powers for Rainbow Dash. I mean, no, all of them. Like, the, all, all six of them. If you take a look-see, their bite marks are slowly fading away. Yeah, but, but Rainbow's got, like, ten times as many. Well... She's best friend with Wolverine, I guess. Who knows? But anywho, on to 
uh, Rainbow Dash's Legend, and The Legend of Flash Magnus. Flash! Ah! <laughs> so oh anyway, my. Silver, why don't you uh, summarize this one for us? Right. Flash! Ah! Save your the Pegasi. He'll save every one of us. <laughs> he stared at down a pair of dragons and surfed on their fire flame. Oh. That's really all that happens. Ah! You know, you're probably ain't bad. Oh, wow. I try. So I'm pretty sure every time I sing an angel rips its wings off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God. Uh, oh, don't, don't, yeah, don't do that. You're, you're too hard on yourself, old man. Uh, but anyway. Oh, wow, backhanded compliments. <laughs> oh, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to summarize what you just mentioned, Silver. Flash Magnus here is part of the elite Pegasi force for Cloudsdale? No? Where was he again? I forgot. Well, I don't think that the Cloudsdale existed yet. He was just the Royal Legion oh, yeah. for Pegasi. Maybe yeah. Cloudsdale was a thing at the time, but it's definitely not the Cl- It's more Romanesque. Mm. In fact, these guys might have been the, the prototypes for the Cantalot Guard. Ah, except here. as prototypes, they're actually useful. Yeah, here, here we go, here we go. Member of the Cloudsdale. Oh, Cloudsdale Royal Legion. So Cloudsdale does exist. Huh, that's cool. But anywho, so Flash here is part of the Cloudsdale Royal Legion. They're kind of the Spartans, but not really. And they're on a rescue mission to rescue their, dra- their Pegasi buddies who were captured by the dragon. And guess what? Hey, Torch, he's there! <laughs> well, dragons are long-lived, and... This may speculate the green dragon might be uh, Ember's mama. Oh, do you remember this design? Yeah, green dragon with... Uh, she has more of Ember's facial features, I'd say. No, no, no. No, no. horns, but I guess she got that from Torch. No, no, what I'm saying here is... You remember way back when, before... Toru. Sorry? It was secretly Toru all along. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a Kobayashi uh, dragon maid. <laughs> but anywho, that was saying... Uh, remember way back when in season one, when Lauren released her art, and we got a dragon that looks similar to this art style. Yes, nothing is ever truly abandoned. There's always hope for tomorrow. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that dragon was blue, right? I just remember a black and white sketch. Mm, yeah, probably. But still, this is quote unquote a fun callback to way back when. And continuing back to the story. Uh, some of Flash's buddies were captured by uh, Ember's parents. What big jerks. My question is, what did they do exactly with the ponies? They weren't going to eat them, it seems. Or maybe they were, but they were seasoning them? Nah, they were asking for, what do you know about Princess Celestia? Tell us! What does she like? We want to give her a birthday gift. Ah, that's so nice of them, though. Yeah, but they were very threatening and scary. Come on. If a dragon asks you something, would you tell them and not scream? Depends on the situation. Uh, yeah. I reserve the right to scream like a schoolgirl on helium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, Flash here has a plan saying that, Yo, Captain, I have a plan. I can outfly them. And the Captain says, You know what? I believe you. Here, take the shield. This shield can help you. And he does the flying. Uh, he does the distraction while he's other... Legion mates or legionnaire uh, res- do the rescue mission. And the captain created a storm cloud, which is kind of the, well, plan. Magnus flies into storm cloud and Dragon goes into storm cloud and got zapped. Looks like Ember's so- parents are not very happy about it. Well, I wouldn't be either. I mean, you know, that's electrical shock up the wazoo. And of course, Flash doesn't come out exactly looking all that pretty for it either. Yeah, but he did the job, and he did well. And I, I just got to ask, like, any relation to Flash Sentry? Well, technically, probably not, unless he had a kid just before their their last adventure. It's Romans! Come on! Well, that probably means he was more interested in his uh, squad mates. The dudes. Gun. We all know how the Roman legionnaires were. They were very open with their feelings towards one another. I will say, thanks to the, se- the season seven finale, mm-hmm. I ship it with Rainbow Dash so hard. I know, oh. right? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but anywho, getting right back on track. Um, everybody or every pony here decides on uh, trying to find an escape route. And going deeper into the cave, they found a waterfall or a river stream. An underground river. Yes, an underground river, which is a shortcut to the Winsome Falls. Yay! And the CMCs are very excited about doing the campings, while the big sisters are surprised that you still want to camp after all that happened. And CMC says, yes, we enjoyed it. That was fun. We should do this every year. Yay! And with that, the sisters have fun. We should all be attacked by flying spiders. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> The most terrifying thing in the universe. Yeah, and combo that with the raining spiders in Australia. So there you go. <laughs> well, well, it's Australia. Some of the sheep are non-lethal. That's about it. <laughs> uh, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> but anywho, that is said episode. So let's head on to our final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? <clears throat> all right, well, ranking it all up. My favorite is Miss Mains. It features magic. It features a very noble sacrifice on her part. Uh, probably one of the most genuine conflicts. And uh, you can see why she'd be an inspiration to Rarity. Uh, second favorite is Flash Magnus because it, well, it does nothing offensive. It doesn't do anything wrong. It's just sort of a more adrenaline ride than I think a genuine conflict. I liked his comic version just a little bit more because of uh, the choices he had to make. Rock Hoof doesn't win me over so much because of the sudden, by the power of Grayskull transformation that makes him this all-powerful thing. <laughs> Except he doesn't revert. So it, that one felt a little too deus ex. Plus, there's severe logical questions like, why are you not running from the huge volcano? Why are you not getting on the boat with your protectors? It's like, we're your protectors. We didn't join you in a suicide pact. Good luck. <laughs> but all in all, I, I did enjoy all these stories for their own various reasons. And it's a great way to introduce uh, the, the pillars of Equestria, at least half of them. Well, gosh, not even half. It's seven pillars. Oh, um, actually, just six. Like, that one guy doesn't count yet. Oh, why? Why, why does he not count? Well, why he, does he not count? He ain't no pillar. Yeah. Like the pillars are he ain't no pillar. He's the bean pole of Equestria. Oh, yeah, true. Like Spike. <laughs> oh, great, great. That's the Spike of the group. Ah, oh, so sad. <laughs> but all in all, thoroughly enjoyable. I guess the only thing that really makes me wonder is Scootaloo, the daredevil of the Crusaders, is suddenly terrified of her own shadow. She's gone full Fluttershy. You never she go full Fluttershy. From the last time she went camping and nearly died via waterfall. Well, like you mentioned before, Silver, like she has trauma. She she has issue with uh, the outdoors, like deep forests and whatnot. There's trauma, and then there's dang girl, grow a spine. <laughs> uh, keep her time. No, no, I I, I can't. But yeah, she, she had a rough go of it last time. But at this, but it's also after a while, you're like. Are they overdoing Scootaloo being afraid? Is it too much of a good thing? I think it is like when, you know, the whole Barry situation, like, yeah, she was just protecting Dashy, but still, these girl takes the tell tell. But at the end there, like, she was in a cave-in, and she doesn't know what's going on, so she's panicking a bit, so I don't blame her. But anyway, and the spiders are a thoroughly terrifying idea, but if you meet their tarantula-based brethren... Oh. Flying tarantulas. <laughs> Ooh, I just gave you all nightmares. No, you gave me nightmares. Like, no, actually, I mean, Silver is being mean to me. Actually, I gave Safi nightmares when I sang my Ebonic song. Oh, God. I I'm just thinking of um, Monster Mitsume. Like, that version of the spider. Oh, God, no. I haven't seen I mean, that, so. Oh, that was a problem I mean, anime. It's really good. It's not anything wrong to for what she's into, but I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> okay, stop anime, let's continue on with ponies. Seppi, what about you? What do you think? Ravioli, ravioli, don't leave the dragon lolly. It has nothing to do with this episode, but I'm saying it anyway. I don't know what, but something got me on a Kobayashi kick. My thoughts on the episode. Good episode. I did not have any context within the uh, the Legends um, context, 
So I don't know. I never put two and two together when they started talking about the legends ever since we saw like the uh the Shadow Play comic or I forget. Was that Shadow Play or no? Shadow Play, Shadow Something. Doesn't really matter anyway. Shadow Play mentions the pony of shadows and the threat he represents, but not the pillars themselves. Yes. Anyway, so as an individual story itself, because I never put two and two together throughout the entire season, I liked it. I mean, it was a nice little derailing from the normal formula of friendship problems everywhere. And honestly, the season kind of reminded me of the fourth season when they introduced the keys, except I didn't put two and two together right away. Alrighty then, alrighty then. And as for me, this episode was a fun watch because, like Silver, I have been reading the Legends of Magic comics and said Legends of has always been telling the story of, oh, this is um, what happened in their past. Like, I've been always thinking, and I was thinking like, oh, I wonder how that story goes. Like, how did that adventure went? Like, that's got to be fun and stuff. But yeah, we got this one and the crossover was strong. Like Silver mentioned, my rankings for the Legends is, for this three part anyway, uh, is probably the same. Uh, Miss Main has the most impactful story. Flash has the most action packed. While um, Rockhoof is just puzzling in how he got his power. I got no idea how, but eh, at least he did a good job. Overall, this episode was fun and... Eh, it it starts the ball rolling on what's the new angle for this season's going to be. It's also worth mentioning, this one was, it came out just after the mid-season hiatus, I think. I think so. Um, so it's kind of like the season revved up its finale here. Hmm, I'm, I'm so confused because of the whole, uh, what you might call this, Australian release and whatnot. Like, it's it's very all over the place. E. Anyways. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's time we return to the comic, and we still have not concluded Friends Forever. And so we we shall go to what I believe is the penultimate, Friends Forever, number, th- number 37, featuring the great and powerful Trixie. Oh, and Rarity. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah nice yeah. arm roll. Thank you. I do my best to roll my R's, Sapphire. How the hell you do that? I don't know. Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, that will be next week's deal. So if you guys at home would like to support the show, like how Starstream did, you can always do so at patreon.com or coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurka Cat, Namdragatorius, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Mark, and also Charles. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You guys have been really, really awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Senzo. I am Cecil Quill. I've been traumatized. And we'll guys see you next week with another episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. My head. Flash. Ah. <laughs> oh god. Somebody help me. We got to do an MBS show musical someday, man. Like that's got to happen. <laughs>